If you've ever been to a coast, then the sound you are hearing is a familiar sound. It's a sound of a large numbers of birds. In this case, we are interested in large number of birds living on isolated islands, undisturbed by man for a very long time. How are those sounds connected to geography, Europe, farms all over the world, and U.S. policy in the mid-1800s. Listen on and you will find out. This podcast addresses the Minnesota Geography Standard for Grade 4, 4.3.4.9.1, how the environment influences human actions and humans both adapt to and change the environment. You are listening to a podcast created by the Minnesota Alliance for Geographic Education. Our mission is to help you understand your world better through geography. Our presenter is Dr. David Lanegren, Professor of Geography at McAllister College in St. Paul and Director of the Minnesota Alliance for Geographic Education. I am Fred Kunze, a member of the Minnesota Alliance for Geographic Education. European agriculture uh, began to change dramatically about 1600, and the Europeans uh, realized that if they stabled their animals over the winter and fed them in close confinement, they would produce a large amount of manure. And this manure was excellent organic fertilizer, could be spread on the fields in the spring, and the result was a great increase in productivity. So as the farmers spread manure on their fields and realized that that manure was increasing the productivity, a so-called positive spiral began where the the more they produced uh, grain, the more the animals could eat, more fertilizer was produced, more fertilizer for the fields, and so on, and agriculture began to boom. However, um, after a couple of hundred years, and using organic fertilizer on the natural fertility of the soils, and as agriculture became more intensified, and more food was needed as people moved to the cities, um, the Farmers in Europe and in the United States uh, realized that they needed to find another source of fertilizer. And the uh, agriculturalists and entrepreneurs seized upon a product called guano, G-U-A-N-O. Now, guano is actually ancient bird and bird manure, bird droppings. And it was so old and so deep that actually people mined guano. So we can think of guano as the first form of commercial uh, chemical fertilizer. Ships sailed to areas where there were large piles of guano. We can actually think about them as mountains of guano. So it's interesting to think about this as as an environmental uh, point because the places where you'd find the most bird manure would be the places where you'd have the most birds and where the birds could find the most food. And this, of course, was the cold currents off South America, where large numbers of fish gathered in those nutrient-rich waters, and then millions, perhaps billions of birds uh, lived there to harvest the fish. And of course, in the process, left behind guano islands. Now, guano uh, is high in nitrogen, so high in nitrogen that you could actually make gunpowder from it. And these value, these islands became so valuable that in 1856, the United States Congress passed the Guano Island Act. And the key passages in this were as it follows. Whenever any citizen of the United States discovers a deposit of guano on an, any island, rock, or key, not within the lawful jurisdiction of any other government and not occupied by the citizens of any government and takes peacefully possession of the island, that island, rock, or key at the discretion of the United States 
can be considered appertaining to the United States, meaning it's ours. So people sailed around the ocean looking for islands of guano. So Peru had the best deposits, uh, and as you see from these pictures, they were actually mined in the way we now mine coal. Uh, and the um, excavations went on rapidly, and as you might expect, guano was soon exhausted, and the world had to turn to chemically produced nitrogen fertilizer. You have been listening to a production of the Minnesota Alliance for Geographic Education. Background music is courtesy of Jim Hogue of Decora, Iowa. The Minnesota Alliance is a nonprofit group of educators and other parties who are interested in promoting an enhanced understanding of our world through improved geographic literacy.